what's up everybody welcome back to the troop podcast we are on this might be episode four i'm not sure really? no episode five episode four of the new season yes yeah. and today we're here with hannah pink you can give a little intro to yourself where are you oh. from <laughs> oh, wasn't, ready, like, for ready for the intro <laughs> <laughs> give a little intro to yourself where are you from mm -hmm. what's going on in your life right now and tell tell us uh what a goal is what's your biggest goal mm. Um, okay, hey, I'm Hannah Pink. I'm from Orange County, California, so oh, not too see, far let's away. Go. <laughs> not too far away. <laughs> um, and I'm in my LA 2.0 phase right now. That's what I've been calling it. What does that mean? Um, Tell me what that means. Because <laughs> I lived here before in 2019, yeah. and then COVID, I moved back home. I just needed to like live some life. It was like all about dance. I was still like super young. I'm still young now, but right. I was even younger then. Um, and so, yeah, I just needed to like live some life, like kind of just like recenter. And then I moved back here like on January 1st. So it's like 2.0 for yes. me now. January 1st of this year, 2024, yes. yes. But I had been driving back and forth pretty much like that whole time yes. still, like for Troop, like I did that for a year straight. Yo, you're committed. That <laughs> yeah. is like one thing I respect about you. You actually are like one of the best students that I've ever had in my life oh. because <laughs> you trust the process. And, um, it, you know, I just love a student to where it's like, if I give you something to work on, if I, I suggest something, I know something's going to help you. Like to see you actually put things into practice and you put it into practice pretty much immediately you know mm -hmm. and and your career is really all about like how fast can you learn your lessons how fast can you pick up and make changes and make adjustments mm -hmm. that determines like is it going to take you a year two years to, to succeed to see some success from this or is it going to take you five six seven eight years because mm -hmm. you're getting your own way and i think you've grown really fast and i know things are coming for you and it's coming for you really really soon because you are such a great student and uh and today we're gonna i know you have a lot of questions yes. for me she's interviewing me today <laughs> uh and i love that we can do this because i know this is going to be impactful for you i know it's actually going to make a difference and we're not just here just yapping yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> but anyways i went on this whole rant i didn't even let you finish oh yeah so i'm in la 2.0 la 2.0 yeah so much better so much healthier. Um, I feel like really locked in too, mm -hmm. like very zoned in. Um, yeah, I mean, even when I was in Orange County, like I got like a regular, like normal person job. Right. Like, you know, I was like, <laughs> I was just doing things. I think I was kind of lying to myself that like dance wasn't going to be the dream. Like it wasn't mm. going to be the career. Mm -hmm. And then like we even had that meeting in like, I think December where I was like, yeah. I'm literally changing everything. So that way this is like no longer a hobby. Like it's yes. the career like I've always known deep yes. down. But like now I'm I'm able to make those changes. Um, what made you feel like? you couldn't do this or this wasn't going to be it for you? Mm, I think it was just because last time I got here, I moved here when I was 17 and I was just like so like lost in the sauce. So yeah. like I think as everyone is. Um, but yeah, I was just like, I was doing the classes and I was doing the things which is kind of funny. It ties into this of like, I was doing all the things like my agents were telling me to do of like, you just need to post this, this and this and then mm. you should be good to go, you mm -hmm, know? And like mm -hmm. nothing, things were happening. Um, but just like not at the pace I was expecting. I think that happens for a lot of people. Yep. Um, yeah, people so. move here and they think their life's gonna change in a month. Yeah. And then they're like so <laughs> discouraged if it doesn't, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, so it's just so much healthier this time. I have like things outside of dance that I love, people that I really love. Actually, who I met through you, so thank you. Hey. <laughs> like literally. That's my favorite part about yeah. running a program, running a company. Yeah, like you know, like my best friend, like I met through you, so. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I'm so happy that's to really, hear that. It's been amazing. But yeah, I'd say like a big goal for me really is to book a tour. Like yeah. that's, I was at a tour like the night that I realized like this is what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because like I, I've been home recently, like in my childhood home and I have a vision board in the room mm -hmm. and I was rereading it and everything I wrote almost because I wrote the years that I thought things were going to happen have like happened. And I put I was going to go on a tour in 2025. I wrote mm. that when I was like 16. Wow, really? And all the other things that happened, like have been on the board have like almost Ooh. happened too. So I was like, 16 I year felt old that. I felt a little something about that. 
Yeah. I know that's coming too. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So I guess that's I good. We're coming out back there. to this. <laughs> We're gonna come back to this in 2025. Yeah. Because I know that's gonna, if not earlier, but okay, that's yeah. beautiful. That so that's Hannah. Yeah. Love yeah. Hannah. Happy to have you here. Uh, and let, we could just get straight into it. Yeah. Let's Are you let's ready? let's go down the list. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's get, let's attack it. So we're talking about social media. Yeah. Do we have to intro that at all? Like. Yeah. I mean, maybe give give the listeners kind of like a preview of what kind of questions you're asking and mm. why you're asking them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Social media is the topic. Um, just because it's changing it's evolving like every single day and like sometimes i feel yeah. like it's like how do you keep up some of it's like how do you be relevant like it's it's almost seems like content creation yes <laughs> this, is, this is this is perfect <laughs> <laughs> hey how you doing no not right now Sorry, because someone just came into the studio to clean the place. But yeah, I just think like because it's evolving so much and I think like even like when I first moved out here, it's like you just got to post like X, Y, Z and that will be good. Nowadays, like no, like it's right. <laughs> not going to get you like anything really. Right. And I think we you're, you've talked about this a lot of like this is a great time to be an artist, a yes. great time to be utilizing social media. And I think we still have like very old school thoughts yes. around social media. Absolutely. So like I came to you because I just wanted to get like a refresher of like, OK, let me like get this together. Yeah. Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. OK. <laughs> well, to start, how do you feel about social media currently? Like just in general, how do you what does it make you feel? <laughs> Um, obviously there's a lot of pros and cons. I love that you can learn a lot from it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'm constantly learning different things. Uh, you know, I'm in my entrepreneur bag now, you know. You are. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I love that there is such a wealth and access to knowledge when it comes to different things that I'm interested in mm -hmm. that can help me elevate and I can put them into practice pretty much immediately. I like that part of it. And then as far as dance goes, I love that I'm able to learn about all kind of talent all over the world. Mm. I love that I'm exposed to so many different styles, even so many different dancers, teachers, choreographers all over the world. So I think I love I love that part of it. And I love the opportunities that have come into dance because we are so influential now. Mm. So I love the opportunities that are now at the table for us that maybe never would have been or never could have been in the future if it wasn't for social media, mm -hmm. you know, because working with brands, partnering with brands, all that kind of stuff is opened up. And I don't think that happens without, you know, us being influential, you know, these brands, they want to partner, they want to work with people who have an influence, they have a community and we're mm -hmm. able to build influence, we're, we're able to build community through social media. I even think the Olympics, like break dancing's in the Olympics this year. I don't think that happens without social media, you know, because sure. I know with the Olympics, they're trying to target, you know, bring in a younger demographic now. Mm. So it's not just breaking, there's also skateboarding and there's like something else that they've added to the Olympics to appeal to a younger demographic. Mm. And I definitely don't think that happens without social media, to be honest. Mm. So uh, yeah, that's how I feel about it. I think you know cons is it's tricky to keep up with um but i'm i'm back in a, a space of playing the game kind of mm. not playing the game like uh trickery or something <laughs> <laughs> but like i'm enjoying learning what works learning what works for me the things that i want to do um and i'm enjoying i'm enjoying like consistently testing things you know with mm. the team uh, at Troop, you know, we're always posting and learning every week and having conversation conversations every week about, OK, this worked, this didn't work. Why did this work? Um, what do people want next? What are people enjoying now? Like, and, and I love that part of it. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe it is because I do have a group of people that I can go to with it. And um, I think maybe that's something more dancers need to do is like, Get in a group of people. Don't attack it alone. Mm. Find a group of people that, you know, y'all can work at it and learn it together. Because I think that's what's been really helpful with navigating social media for me. Mm. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm like there all the time, I mm-hmm. love seeing what gets posted because mm-hmm. I, I don't know if there's another program that's like trying to put things out like troops putting out. Oh, I like that. Sense. I love that you say that. Yeah, it mm-hmm. feels like so fresh. Even though I'm like there and I'm right. like experiencing it in real time, I'm like, I don't know how they're going to put it together or like uh. what they're going to highlight. Like I I don't really, I don't go on TikTok too much right now. I yeah. like once or twice a week. Yeah. But I'm always like, I can't wait to like see what is getting posted on that. Hey, page. that's cool. I, I actually never hear from people in the company like that are already in it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't really hear much about what they feel on the set. I need to ask more. Mm. Um, about what they feel about what we're posting. I usually hear it from like people that are coming in, mm. you know, uh, like this grabbed my attention, this pulled me in, this is what made me want to join, that kind of thing. So that means a lot. I, I love yeah. that. I love that a lot, really. Yeah, because I mean, that's what got me to join in the first place, too, because mm-hmm. I was seeing all the social media stuff and I was like, I need to be in that room. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and, and I mean, that's the thing is that is something that people can reverse engineer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're, we're clear and we get clear every day on what our clientele wants to see, what they're attracted to, what they, what grabs their attention and makes them want to be in the room. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and we try to get better and better at creating that kind of content without manufacturing anything. It's just more of like, what are the pieces, what are the things we're already doing and how do we make sure we highlight, highlight what we're already doing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that's the, the first tip we start with is, <laughs> you know, what are you already doing and, and can you document that and post that so the clientele that you want to work with can see like, oh, okay, this is what that this person is about. This is what this mm-hmm. dancer is about, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I guess in this kind of the same line of like then noticing like what are the things that you like Mm. from other people like what is your for you page looking like Mm -hmm. right now Mm -hmm. and what are you liking on it (laughs) yeah yeah um in general it's a lot of like fishing videos (laughs) raiders videos yeah uh honestly politics because i do actually like to know what's going on Mm -hmm. uh i think it's a very interesting space the country has been in but i think new things are happening to Mm -hmm. where there is promise and hope but um i just like to know what's going on you know good bad or ugly i want to know um so it's a lot of a lot of that sports uh and then when it does come to dance it's really weird because i feel like my algorithm knows what kind of dancer i like Mm. like it knows the style i like that's crazy it's weird (laughs) so when it does push new people to me it's very much like exactly the kind of even it might not even be somebody who's like super viral or anything sometimes like mm. but it still knows that I would be interested in it based off of things that I've saved or engaged in mm. before so and I think it just kind of like pays attention to the to the kinds of things I've saved before and then also like who else has saved those things mm. and what content do they like and then they push me that content because I'll probably like it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What if like AI starts choreographing? <laughs> Yo, it, it, I'm Uh-oh. sure it's coming in some kind of way. Maybe. I think I think AI can help. We'll we'll find ways where AI can assist in your creations. Whether mm-hmm. it's, I mean, even you know, there's some of those videos where you know you'll have like one person dancing and then it will duplicate that person. Mm-hmm. Or I've even seen like. It, it'll be like that person, but like animations or like different characters made out of that person behind yeah. them, right? Yeah. Um, and when I see that, I'm like, this is actually really beneficial because the reason you get into the studio with dancers to put your choreo on them is so you can see, okay, what is it gonna look like with a group of people, mm-hmm. you know? But if you can just do that on your own at home sometimes, mm-hmm. or I could even imagine if I'm choreographing, if I can have the, the, um, if I can see on my phone, like duplicates of me. So every mm. time I take a step, it shows what it's gonna look like with a group of people. That would be fire. Mm. That would be really helpful. Be- yeah. Because then it's instant. I don't have to wait. Like, I wonder what this is gonna look like with everybody. It's like, no, I know already what mm. works and what doesn't, you know? Yeah. 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 
I'm like, I, I could keep asking about it, but I don't want to get down that road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could dive deep into that. Uh, out of, like, when you're seeing all those things on your For You page and the things that you're saving and stuff, is it, like, typically long form, short form? Mm -hmm. Do you notice if it's mostly, like, phone, good camera? Like, mm -hmm. what, what are, like, the logistics of those videos that you notice? Yeah, it really doesn't matter if it's phone or a video. I think I will say one thing is... I, to be honest, I I have seen so much of like the typical class video mm. where it's like a videographer in front, a bunch of lights, and then they're like going like this. I can't watch those videos. <laughs> it's too much camera movement. Like I can't really see the dance. And then it's also like, I've just seen so much of it that I'm just like, it just, I don't know, feels super repetitive. I'd rather it be something where it's like, uh, interesting perspective mm -hmm. I like stuff like that an interesting pr perspective or it's like off to the side through the mirror it feels more like fly on the wall mm -hmm. I like that kind of stuff um, or I still I like the like old school somebody's filming from the back of the studio through the mirror mm -hmm. I love that Pauline does that a lot a lot a lot and I love Pauline mm -hmm. I, lo I love her style and I love her videos I love her how she presents herself mm -hmm. it feels more um, I don't know it feels more authentic less produced and I also think that if it is going to be produced like if it if your setting looks like a music video my expectations are higher of the dancing mm -hmm. yeah. your dancing needs to look like music video you need to be going off yeah. right and it, that's not always the case and it does and it shouldn't be like sometimes class is just class you know and it's not about going off necessarily it's more about learning so it just depends and not every I was, uh, like I don't know sometimes I teach a piece that is not for a performance it's mm -hmm. not for it's the, there's something very specific that I want you to learn from this piece like so it might be very simple it might just be a bunch of lines mm -hmm. And not for the sake of I'm gonna put this on stage, but we just need to practice our lines. Yeah. So I made a sequence that works for that. Um, so, so yeah, I hope that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I'm seeing um, all kind of stuff. It's more about like how what's the quality of the movement more than the quality of the camera. Mm -hmm. You know, and also our phones are amazing cameras. Yeah. These days, you know, they can shoot in 4K. It looks great. So. Mm -hmm. It's more that it's more about the quality of the dancer, uh, and do you have foundation? Can you groove? Are you unique in some kind of way? You know, like there's some choreographers I like. There's uh, there's this dancer, dancer and teacher Levi, in. In London? London. Yes. Fire. Yes. Crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy dancer. Super unique, super unique body type. Love to watch Levi. And then there's like Blake, I think Blake John Wood or something like that. I hope uh -huh. I'm not messing it up. But his style's cool. Or like Todd, Todd mm. Williamson. Mm -hmm. His style's unique. Like I like people that are bringing something new and not just regurgitating what they know works like i don't want to see nat bat v2 <laughs> yeah you know or isabel v2 i want to see you like what i want to see like what is your i like this with dance styles and content styles mm -hmm. i want to see what do you have to say what what does where you're from how does that influence how you move mm -hmm. you know um, show me like your story, like show me your unique influences. I just hate when I can see like, okay, I know where you got that from. You know, like mm -hmm. I know exactly what video you watched. <laughs> I know who you are, like I, I can see it clearly. But I love to watch somebody's work and be like, I, it brings me into a whole nother world. You know, like I'm feeling something I never felt before. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm seeing something I never saw, saw before. I'm, th I'm thinking I'm inspired in a new way. Like. Oh, I never thought to do that kind of pattern. I never thought to pull from that p part of my body. You know, like mm -hmm. I love, or I never thought of that kind of character. That character is really unique and interesting, you know? So yeah. I like I like that stuff. I like, I want to feel something new, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess this like transitions more into like 
now f- like we're we are the content creators ourselves and yeah. i feel like we often or even i've said this to you before like what if i don't want to be an influencer mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. like what do you say to that? yeah um yeah it's not about being an influencer you're creative and you need to show people your creations it's really as simple as that and also if you're going to be in the industry um people in the industry in in entertainment and media whatever you are an influencer you know Mm -hmm. you by nature you're influential you're on tv you know you're on tour you are influential already i think social media just gives you a chance to be in control of the narrative Mm -hmm. you know you're more like why would you not before whenever you would see a dancer it's a part of somebody else's vision you know it's what somebody else wanted and you only get to see that dancer within that context within somebody else's world Mm -hmm. right so you you still are influential but you're you're influencing you're a part of somebody else's kind of uh message story everything like that but with social media you have the opportunity to create your own narrative create your own story be seen in the light that you so choose Mm. you know so why would you not do that like this is the ultimate time for us to really put ourselves out there Mm. my this is this is my idea Mm -hmm. you know this is not my best idea within the context of somebody else's vision Mm. no this is fully me yeah you know so why not why would you not do that um what was the question again um like just if, when someone says like mm-hmm. I, what if i don't want to be an influencer like yeah. reasoning yeah. against that maybe. yeah yeah and i also think people are when when they start posting it's really an identity issue mm-hmm. it's really a i don't want my friends to think i think i'm so important and cool now that's whack you have something to say you have things that you want to accomplish you have things that you want to do so don't be quiet or dim yourself to either make other people comfortable or to make yourself feel I don't know like why do why do we want to hold ourselves back and fit in so bad and just like blend and be anonymous Mm -hmm. so bad you know Mm -hmm. and uh, people have kind of like demonized doing more than the bare minimum Mm -hmm. you know your friends are wrong they should be doing more Mm -hmm. (laughs) they should they should be stepping outside of the box they should be putting themselves out there um if, if, if this is like really what you want to do i don't know if you're an artist like why why do we have such a problem every other artist every artist you look up to they put themselves out there mm-hmm. they share themselves they share their story they talk about their work you know why do dancers and choreographers have this like i need to be so humble and quiet and unseen mm. i mean i know why because that's always been the the case and even though it shouldn't have been it's just a identity uh, or uh, a kind of, um, I don't know, I guess like an identity that we've adopted, that we're just supposed to be seen and not heard mm. kind of thing. Yeah. And I don't, I don't believe in that. And I don't think in order to take dance to where it's supposed to be and f- in order to, you know, get these rates that pe- people, uh, these rates that everybody wants and in order for people to respect and understand dance like we've always wanted them to, we need to speak up. We need to tell people about who we are, how this works, why we do what we do, mm-hmm. like all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think it's it's all of our responsibility. I don't think it's just about opportunities you can get from it, but I think it's our responsibility to shed a light on dance, the dance world, the dance industry, mm-hmm. you know? So um, I, I, I know people maybe people don't like the term influencer um 
but uh, every dancer I talk to, they always say they want to inspire people. Mm-hmm. So just be an inspirer then. Yes. <laughs> so be an influencer, <laughs> just be an inspirer. Yeah. <laughs> being yeah. an inspiration. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I feel like that goes back to like the kind of outdated mindset, even with social media. It's like, yeah. I think the label was just we're dancers, but mm-hmm. really it's artists. Yeah, exactly. Techni- technically, yeah. I mean, because it is, it's not just like our movement, but it's like the way we dress, the way that we're like, constantly tapped into what's going on the way that I choose to do my hair and my makeup like it really comes from the inside out but I just think we're starting to realize that or or it has been for like a wave now yes um but yeah just like influencer itself feels like you have to like create something brand new but it's Mm -hmm. like really just your essence your being like we are all made so differently yeah you don't got to do much just like start recording what you do already and like people will find that literally (laughs) dance is already (laughs) interesting yeah like your lifestyle, the the audacity to go after this path when it is so competitive, when it is so challenging, difficult to do what we do, when it requires so much of you and you're taking such a big bet to move away from your home. And you know, dance is one of those things where you have to be in a specific space mm-hmm. to do it professionally, right? Yeah. Like other sports and whatnot or other art forms, you can kind of be anywhere just about. Mm-hmm. But for dance, you have to be in LA, New York, Atlanta, London, Paris, wh- whatever, right? So to take that risk and bet on yourself and leave your family behind and go after this crazy dream is super interesting. It's mm-hmm. really like the epitome of the American dream, really, mm-hmm. to me, you know, mm-hmm. of um, like, I'm just going to go after it, something that should not even be possible and something that is so rare. And even though um, people might not even understand it or understand what's possible for it or with it, I'm going to go for it. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's what you know, people who want to move here, who want to be here, that's why they want to come here, Mm -hmm. is to make the impossible possible for themselves. And I think that is the essence of anybody who chooses to do this at a professional level, you know? So that's fascinating. And I think the world would be really interested to know more about it and and what that lifestyle looks like on a a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Being, Being a professional artist and a professional athlete at the same time mm, yeah it's crazy yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah it's like full-time job even if you're not on a job mm-hmm. like I got stuff to do I gotta keep my body in check I yes. gotta like make sure I'm up to date on things like it is a full-time job even yeah. if you're not booked on an actual job to yes me. <laughs> and 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 you you are doing it all yourself you don't have a team yeah. you mm-hmm. don't have a stylist a manager like you don't have a team putting it all together mm-hmm. you know you have to figure out your styling yourself mm-hmm. your hair and makeup yourself <laughs> you have to <laughs> go out and train nobody's telling you okay you have your personal trainer mm-hmm. Monday Tuesday Thursday Friday like nobody no you have to go put yourself to work Mm -hmm. it's all on you yeah (laughs) you know uh all of it has to get figured out by you so and you have to take care of your body like taking care of your body is just in itself like both strengthening stretching staying flexible staying healthy all of that kind of stuff on Mm -hmm. it on its own is hard Mm -hmm. and then there's the creativity part of it and you have to continuously develop yourself as a creativity and explore creativity expand yourself Mm -hmm. find inspiration like all of that kind of stuff it takes so much it's it's that's why that was the whole thing behind me creating super camp that was the original idea Mm -hmm. it's like i'm bringing together these superhumans to train Mm -hmm. you know uh and that's really how i feel about dance and dancers is yeah dancers are superhuman Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Is there are there any dancers right now who you are enjoying content wise? Like mm-hmm. maybe not necessarily like the people you already named for their choreography that they're mm-hmm. putting out, but just like the day in the life. So yes. just like those kinds of things. Like. I think there's a girl on TikTok I like mm-hmm. named uh, Jocelyn, Jocelyn Martinez. Oh, yes, 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 I yes. sent you her recently. Yes. I think she's doing a great job. Like she is the example of how to approach TikTok as mm. a professional dancer in my opinion um 
And I say that because she puts a lot of thought and intention into her videos. And it's not just her dance. It's a great dance video. Mm -hmm. Like if it was just the dancing, it would be fire. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, she puts captions on the screen to get you to think, to get you to understand what's going on in her mind, how she's thinking about things. Um, so it adds a lot of value to anyone who wants to dance professionally. But even if you're not a professional dancer, if you don't want to be a dancer, just general public, you can see that video and kind of understand more about how a dancer thinks about things. Mm. You know, like, I think a, a lot of just people just in general are curious about how do they remember all those routines? You know, mm. like, how do they... Uh, what are they thinking about as they're dancing? You know, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, they would be fascinated by, but hardly anybody really talks about it. You know, mm. we I think we we just are so, and it's a beautiful thing, but it has its pros and cons. But we're so just hyper focused on us, our community, <laughs> what we're doing, what each other is doing. Yeah, like we're in our own universe. Yeah, and we forget about just regular people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> most of the time, and. We just, and we approach content in that way mm. of like just dance or seeing it. Mm. But anybody and everybody can see it. And, um, and I'm not saying you need to always cater to just everybody. Um, but sometimes in your content, you should kind of keep that in mind, I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think her, I think Jocelyn's doing great. I think Isaiah Southall is mm. doing an amazing job. He's like killing it. He's done a great job of building community, creating. Uh, the type of content that is watchable for anybody. Um, I enjoy watching his stuff and how he approaches it. I learn from what he posts. I think he's doing a great job. Um, and then there's other people, I can't think of their names right now, but there are some people that I think, I just love how they move. Mm. And, 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 and I enjoy seeing them doing like the professional dancer thing, the being in class thing, but I also s enjoy seeing them do trends, honestly. Mm. Like I like their approach to it, yeah. you know, because I just like their movement in general. So then to see like a simple challenge, how they approach it mm. with their quality of movement is fire, you know? And, yeah. and these challenges are not like the old challenges, you know? And that's the thing, like there's people who still think, both dancers and non-dancers, that still think TikTok is like, pre-pandemic TikTok mm. to where it's just like renegade. Like <laughs> people still think it's still that. Like these challenges is, is like, they're really dancing now. Yeah. They're really, really dancing. And, and a lot of times what is uh, going viral or whatever the new trend is, a lot of times now it's from music videos. Like it's professional, mm. like it's from professional choreographers and teachers now, mm -hmm. you know, so it it's not it's not corny really anymore to do trends like mm -hmm. we've come way beyond that now so yeah i i like it i love to see honestly people approach these different trends my favorite right now and this is the simplest trend and i love every anybody who does it i love it every time mm -hmm. is the um the Megan the Stallion one, the the star, oh, the star one. I love that one. I love that. I love how she does it. It's so good. I love how the the uh, dancers. Are, I, I, I've seen so many different dancers do it. I love it every single time. Yeah, we yeah. should film it after this. We should. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for me. It's not for you. For you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that's an interesting point too. Of like, I think even with the term like influencer in the past or even maybe still now like people think they only have to do like one or the other like I'm only posting trends mm -hmm. or I'm only doing like get ready with me mm -hmm. but it's like even though you said like we are just so influential <laughs> just by like being like why can't you do yeah. both right if you want you don't have to just do like all the <laughs> right. I don't even know <laughs> what is gonna come out of my body <laughs> but like you know you don't have to just be <laughs> one or the other like there's like everything we do yes. could be a trend no, literally, <laughs> literally. And just your day to day life is, I mean, l life in America is interesting. Mm -hmm. Life in LA is interesting. Mm -hmm. Life as a dancer in LA is interesting, you yeah. know? Um, and especially, and then life as a advanced or, or pro dancer is really interesting and fascinating for anyone, mm. for anyone to watch. You know, I saw a video recently 
of this dancer. I wish I, I wish I could. I wish I remembered her uh, handle. This is the first video I saw from her. But I love that uh, she was she was in New York, and you could see in the video that she was in New York. Like she literally was on the street in New York. She walks up to her phone phone and started talking about being a dancer in New York, mm. and that really grabbed my attention um, because. I'm interested. What is dance like in New York? Mm -hmm. I've never lived there and danced. I've never really, I'm, I maybe did one job, or a couple jobs in, in New York, but I've never lived the lifestyle of being a dancer or choreographer in New York. And it's very different from LA. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting to me. I would love to see more of that. Like in what ways is it different? Or, or not even just learning about what's different, but even just feeling it. Mm -hmm. Feeling the the essence of uh dancer in New York like that's interesting to me if I can mm -hmm. tap into that you know yeah for a day you know just like I watch any other content of like people that live in cabins in the middle of the woods <laughs> which is what I want to do like, eventually one day <laughs> like just watching it you know you could talk you could not talk mm -hmm. but just the feeling of it yeah is interesting to be able to channel another life Mm -hmm. for a moment and experience that I think is really fun to do yeah and yeah. that's like not as exhausting to put out content like that because you're just being like vulnerable and just like honest versus like here's like the finished product yes it's like no this is what my day was like after this audition and it sucked or right <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know? exactly and you're just and and let me see you walking away from the studio you know mm -hmm. let me see you and also let me hear let me hear LA I love that I can see and hear new york yeah in her video i can hear the cars i can hear the traffic like i can i feel like i'm there with mm -hmm. her you know if you're a dancer in paris i don't know what that's like how is it different you know i know they have like i think they have like this thing to where artists get a stipend every month mm -hmm. like artists get paid by the government oh something sick. like that tell me more about that i want to learn please. i want to <laughs> learn about that i want to see what life is like where do you i don't even where do y'all go eat where do you like when y'all yeah. leave uh the, the when y'all leave lax studio where do you go eat yeah. what do y'all do after that what are the conversations y'all have i want to know more about that when you uh leave class at playground in london like what what was what's the vibe like mm. what does everybody do after that where do y'all like to go i don't know where do y'all hang out where do y'all party like what events do y'all have out there mm. i want to i want to see it i like i think it's just interesting um Sat, sometimes satisfying to watch, entertaining to watch, educational, uh, or just, I don't know, even inspiring. Maybe y'all have an approach to, to dance in the industry that we don't have here and we can learn from that and like, oh, maybe we need to adopt that, you know, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Even think of like for people who are maybe on their way to being like a pro dancer. Yeah. Is there any any person you can think of who's like documented their journey really well whether they're a pro now or they're like on the journey mm -hmm. that you've seen and are liking that yeah. are like this is the journey of what it's like <laughs> yeah i would say i haven't i haven't necessarily seen anybody currently to where it's like from a skill level they gone from beginner to advanced mm -hmm. but i have seen people that were like new to la and maybe they're dope already but I've seen them like build their notoriety and go from like not working mm. to working. And yeah. they've kind of like documented that journey. Right. You know, and, and honestly, like I think Jocelyn's one of those people, mm -hmm. uh, even Isaiah is one of those people. Yeah. So it's not really like from skill level, but from like a notoriety standpoint, I've seen them from like not being a name to like a name or building their name. Mm -hmm. I've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as like seeing the full process or maybe going from intermediate to advance to pro i haven't experienced that since natbat that's who i was thinking of too yeah. yeah i've seen her entire journey she used to send me videos when she was in detroit when mm. she was like 13 14 something like that yeah um and she always had great like energy and fight mm. and she would learn a bunch of professional choreographers videos and send it to them and whatnot she's always been very bold like that and mm -hmm. i've interviewed her as well and she's talked about how bold she was and how she would just go up to choreographers and be like you need to work with me <laughs> 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 that's that. super bold and look at where it's taken her being that bold but uh yeah that was the last person that 
I was able to see like you don't even live in LA you're a teenager trying to figure it out mm. to move into LA her being in my class seeing her in other classes and on to like now her going on tour and doing this and that and traveling mm. world and teaching yeah. I've seen the full I've seen the full journey and that's it's been really it's been really satisfying and the thing is I never judged her when she was just trying I never judged her I never I respected her for being bold and for for going for it mm. and you know being being um also smart and intentional with like I'm gonna learn from people that I want to work with one day mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be bold enough to film it and not only that I'm gonna post it and not only that I'm gonna send it to the choreographer yeah. as well you know and maybe that's some of that just you know you're you're young young and naive but I know that's paid off for not only for her but me even in my career being young and naive or what you would think is naive uh, from the outside looking in that that kind of just like anything is possible I'm just gonna try mm. that has paid off for me in so many major ways in my career just mm. just being like who knows F it let's just try yeah and and it's paid off many 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 times mm. yeah it makes me think of what uh, a previous conversation we had a, a while ago is like talking about how people love to follow professional athletes yeah. because you quite literally see their wins and quite literally like their losses too. Yes. And that's how like people get so invested in that person's career. Yeah. Um, like, is that something you think we can tap into and like how much do people want to see? Like how, how can we like model what the athletes <laughs> are doing mm -hmm, basically? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really, really great question. Um, it's really through what we're talking about again once again we have to do it for ourselves mm -hmm. you know if if you were to get in that interview what do you think they would ask you and maybe you can just create a scenario where you just answer those questions you just talk about those topics mm -hmm. you know um what people are saying in your comments what people are saying in other dancers comments maybe you can tap into that for, for instance you know um this morning ESPN posted something about breaking in the Olympics mm. and then I could see like people that are not familiar with breaking or how much breaking has evolved since like the 80s they have like an 80s perspective on what breaking is mm. you know I could tell they have a very very outdated version or, um, and view on breaking you know you know those people are in the comments so, and like you know this is not a sport and uh, these are not athletes and you know, blah, 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 blah. And I, and I was re responding to some people. <laughs> I had to, I had to say something. I'm not even a B-boy, but I, I just respect it. And yeah, but, um, but I think what, what went into my mind after that is, okay, I need to do a podcast with a b-boy mm. and let's talk about it why is breaking a sport do do you feel like it is a sport do you feel like it's not let's talk about that let's talk about the things that people are saying like that are not dancers mm. that don't understand the culture that don't understand what we do let's kind of respond to those people and and put that out and i'm sure that would do well because dancers and the breaking community would be excited to have somebody to see somebody talking about it mm. and then non-dancers non-b-boys whatever people that are outside of that community you know general public people that don't understand don't understand how much it's evolved don't don't see or they have their own opinion on if it's a sport or not mm. okay now we're tapping into that conversation they're gonna have some opinions they're gonna have something to say as well so i think we need to be more on top of those kinds of opportunities to where we can create conversation and we can tell stories you know mm -hmm. i want i would love for uh a, a b-boy to come on or or b girl to come on and tell the story of not just how breaking started but let's talk about how far it's come since people saw it before yeah. you know since it's prominence in culture before um in the early uh era of hip-hop let let's 
talk about how, what what has transpired since then. Let's talk about the scene. Let's talk about the community. Mm -hmm. Tell tell the story about what the breaking community is like right right now globally. Because somebody had made that comment of. Um, oh, this other sport should be in the Olympics because at least people all over the world are doing it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, Th like they have huge competitions all over the world with B-Boys. Yeah. Like it's insane. And how much breaking has evolved right now? Like the it, humans should not be able to do the things that they are doing. <laughs> no. Like it should not be possible. Like, like, not e like not to be cliche, cliche but they are, literally like defying gravity <laughs> in many ways it like you can watch something and it's like that makes how do you even practice that how do you get yeah. there how do you think of that you know so yeah i think being able to tell those kind of stories or think either responding to people directly like what are what are what's what's in the just populist conversation mm -hmm. what culture what what conversations are happening in the culture around dance you know it would have been nice to see somebody i know a lot of people posted um normani normani was it normani not normani uh it was victoria monet mm. a lot of people po posted uh victoria monet's bt speech but mm. i would have loved to see some videos of dancers like directly responding to it like mm. in a in a stitch or something like that right what is your opinion what is your perspective maybe you can educate people more on what she's talking about, mm -hmm. you know? Go go in those comments, go in the BET uh, Awards comments when after they posted her speech. What are they saying in those comments? Mm. And can you address some of those things, you know? Uh, so yeah, I think more of that can happen. Um, and then also, uh, I think educating people on, um, I think a lot of dancers don't realize, like if you book a tour, a lot of dancers don't even know like what that actually looks like mm -hmm. they don't know the fact that you're in rehearsals eight hours a day right. for like a month you know mm -hmm. uh i think i think general public would be really interested to find out like how much really goes into that mm -hmm. when they're when they're putting these tours together how much work that really is eight hours sometimes longer sometimes it's like 12 hour mm -hmm. rehearsals full out like it's it's wild it's really wild so yeah i wish there was more of that you know they 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 you know missy and busta and sierra they're all on tour right now mm -hmm. and some epic dancers and i know they put in so much work i would have loved to see i don't know even once a week somebody to like just get their phone out and be like we've been rehearsing this happened that happened mm -hmm. my body feels like this we we've gotten through this many numbers we have this many to go like if you could just educate the world on i think it makes the 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 tour more valuable even mm. so it would just would be cool like if i plan to go to that go to one of the shows and then i see your video and then i go to the show it's like i feel like i'm more of a part of it now mm. i know how much it took to get to that yes i know how much you sacrificed i know that this dancer they they're pushing through on an injury like they they were injured mm. and they're barely recovering and look they're going off they're yeah. still going crazy yeah you know it just makes the show even more exciting mm. and that's the whole point of like story and giving people more context into what we do so when they see us do what we do they respect it and they understand it on a deeper level mm. you know like that's the whole converse the whole point of the conversation that we had is like the the reason people care about these athletes and these um you know these big sports um professional sports is because they feel like they know the players mm -hmm. you know so when they watch the game they're cheering for that player they feel like they know what they've been through they uh, you know it, when when you know uh a kobe bryant is playing with an injury and he and he had to he can't shoot on his right he had to shoot with his left hand mm. you're watching that game more intently and intensely right yeah. and you're more amazed versus just like passively watching it mm, yes you know yeah. what i mean yeah and there's so much content and research to really help people understand um what is happening when someone dunks a ball mm -hmm. when someone you know does you know leaps for a catch whatever it is 
they, you know, or I seen something with like Simone Biles, they had the data of like, at one point she was like 20 feet in the air. I might be exaggerating. 20 feet sounds crazy, but it might have been, <laughs> it might have been that high. She was just super, she was just mad high, but they had, they like showed the image of like exactly at the peak of her flip mm. that she got to this height. So you respect her, you respect her craft. And next mm. time you watch her, you're, you're looking for her to get up there or to get higher than that mm. the next time, you yeah. know? So I think, that's why it's really important for us to create that kind of content and that's how we can go about it. Mm. That was even like another question I had. I feel like that basically answered it is like building a community or mm. a following, not even for the sake of yeah. for the number itself, but just to let people into your journey. I feel like what I took away from that as well is like you have to speak, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, like how many I can think of like a lot of dancers that I love where I'm like, I don't even know what their voice sounds like. Right. You know, and to be able to share those little moments of like, this is what it feels like. I just came off stage. Like you have to like speak. And yes. that's part of the old school way is yeah. like we don't use our voice. Yes. But yeah, I think to let people into all of that, we, we have to speak. Like yeah. I, I posted like that TikTok however long ago that was like a day in the life. And I was like, I don't think I've ever spoken <laughs> on social media. And uh -huh. I was like doing the voiceover and I was like kind of nervous. But I was like, actually, I really liked my voice. Yeah. And it did like really well. And yes. I was like, oh, it, yeah. Yeah. We just have to let that go. <laughs> yeah, abso absolutely. I mean, that's the a part of just human nature when it comes to building relationship mm. with someone. And, and when, that's how you need to think about your social media as you're building a relationship with your audience, you're building a relationship with the viewer. And in order to have a deep relationship, you have to talk to them. They have to hear your voice. Yeah. Uh, it not just what, it's not just, it's not just about what you're saying, but how you feel. Like they can feel what you feel, mm. all of those kinds of things. It's just a very basic human thing. And, um, and I just read about that. I, I, I when it comes to, it comes to like branding and, um, uh, just building and branding and marketing yourself and building an audience. I read about, I can't remember what book it was, but I had read about it a long time ago mm -hmm. about how much human voice matters and how much it makes a difference when you're trying to connect and relate to somebody for them to actually hear you and hear you speak and, and, mm -hmm. and feel what you feel that all comes through voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is kind of a pivot, but if you were to make like your dream content house mm -hmm. <laughs> or group of dancers, who would you put in that? So are you saying like people that are already making content? Could or? be, they could already be doing it or they could have not tapped into that yet, but you just like like their personality or you like the way that they dance, like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, I'll do two houses. Oh, yeah, two, okay. two, two versions. <laughs> um, yeah, if I was doing like a content house with a group of dancers, definitely Jocelyn Martinez, Isaiah Southall. Mm -hmm. I would probably put, um, oh my God, I cannot think of his name. He does like the funnier videos and they're always wearing blue. They're, in, they're always in Ian's garage. I know people are hearing me and like screaming out <laughs> what oh. what his name is. I cannot think of his name. I'm so sorry, bro. But <laughs> but uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else would I put in there that's creating content right now? Uh, I'm trying to think who in L.A. would be good for that. Mm. Um. Maybe, oh, you know who else? This is a little bit, this is way different actually, but like uh, Sean Liu, mm. he's killing it with like social media and just yeah. overall, it's cre he's killing it with everything in his <laughs> life. Um, Sean Liu's really great. Uh, and then, this is a crazy mix, but, and then like Storm. Mm. Storm's great with social media yes. as, as well And she's great with like Storm's great with also Bringing community together Doing events mm -hmm. She's co she's really cool about that So you have like a little mix of everything I think Sean Liu is really great with 
um, film work, editing, mm-hmm. just creative direction. Yeah. You know, uh, I think Isaiah Southall is great with, I think like his putting people together, uh, the, the like, I like how he curates his rooms and then I like how he brings it's like humor in how he like yeah like how he captures humor in him creating even though the pieces come out like really fire you get to experience the process I like I like how he mm. brings people along in the process mm. you know and then um and then Jocelyn like I said, like putting you in the mindset of like when you, I'm I'm gonna help you understand what you're watching. I'm gonna mm-hmm. help you understand this performance and what you're seeing. I'm gonna uh, help you understand uh, what it takes to get to this level of what we're all doing. Mm-hmm. And and then uh, my guy, I can't think of his freaking name, but <laughs> him. Uh, He's just mad funny. He's just really funny. Yeah. Uh, and I like all his uh, concepts behind his humor. And he can make it really relatable just to anybody. So I think you would have a really good good mix within that house. Mm-hmm. Of different people, different ethnicities, and uh, kind of approaches to social, social media. And then for my other house concept, it would be like some troop folks mm-hmm. like you. Yeah. Lauren. <laughs> Jeremiah, mm. uh, Josie, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe one other person. I can't think of anybody right now, but I would love a, a house like that. And for y'all to like, yeah, go crazy, go crazy, <laughs> go crazy with it. Yeah. Wait, that might be a reality. I would love for that, that to be a reality. <laughs> Let's figure it out. Yeah. Um, Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Because then I, I don't want to go down that road too much. Um, what's the biggest excuse you hear for people or hear from people when, when they're, like, not wanting to share themselves online? Mm. And what's your rebuttal against that? Uh-huh. One, people think it's cringy. And uh, like I talked about earlier, I think people – sometimes just see anybody who's doing more than the bare minimum as cringy, especially if they feel like they know them or they knew them before they started getting on social media. Mm. It, 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 it's, it's not cringy at all. Um, I think, yeah, just people are uncomfortable with you doing something different, but you should be doing something different as an artist. I think people also just get, honestly, just, genuinely distracted with their day-to-day life Mm. it's just not something that they're thinking about my rebuttal to that is every artist right now has to figure out social media Beyonce has to have a social media strategy if Beyonce needs a social media strategy you need a social media (laughs) strategy you get what I mean like all of the newer artists that are trying to break your record label is going to tell you what are we doing on TikTok Mm. what like how are you approaching that because that's the only way, or it's a major way to stay relevant and to get your music heard, or it's just hard for it to to catch on. It's mm-hmm. hard for it to get heard if if you don't have an approach to social media, if you or if you're not connecting with your audience. If, and and you know what the the greatest people do. You know what Beyonce does even is. If you want to know about her, you're going to see it in the work. You're going to hear about mm-hmm. it in the work, you know? So I, I think that is really important to, uh, 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 an important addition to what we're talking about mm-hmm. is like when you're creating, make sure it has like a purpose. Like this, I'm talking about like just straight like your art. Mm-hmm. Make sure, it, what is it? What, why, why, why did you use that song? Mm. Why are you moving in that kind of way? Why did you shoot it there? You know, put more of you, your story into it. What inspired it? Where were you when you were like, I, w- I got to do this song? Where, where did you hear it? What were you feeling? Like, what goes into this? I think 
teachers could do even a way better job with that. You know, what is this piece about? Why did you why did you want this piece specifically? And and that's me included. I, that's the one thing I wish I would have been doing this whole time is like mm. or or when in my prime teaching days when I was like posting my uh, choreo is I wish I would have talked more about my approach and why I choreographed that song and uh, what I want, what kind of atmosphere I wanted to curate, how I wanted people people to feel, what it means to me. I think that would have made an uh, uh, even bigger impact whenever I posted something. Mm. Um, again, remind me of the question because I just be going. Uh, the excuse that you hear uh, from people, like the common excuses for why they don't share online, and then we are rebuttal against. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we talked about cringy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people think it's cringy. <laughs> People just get distracted with their life. Oh, mm -hmm. and I, I just to summarize where I was going with that is, um, you know, all of these artists, they kind of have teams that push them to do it. Mm -hmm. A lot of them feel uncomfortable with it, too. But they have to figure it out because they know it's a part of marketing yourself now as an artist and mm -hmm. uh, making sure that your name stays relevant. Um, so they have teams to do it. But unfortunately, once again, we have to do it ourselves so you have to figure it out and it may not be mad comfortable in the beginning but it gets better it gets mm -hmm. easier you know you just got to get started don't overthink it just like get get a bunch of posts out first and then start thinking then mm -hmm. have more strategy mm -hmm. but focus on just like consistency get consistent build the habit of doing it first and then you can start being a more s smart especially in the beginning no one's really paying attention like that yet yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you have no like brand to protect you haven't built anything yet mm. you know so just start pushing stuff out and and just learn and then perfect along the way mm. uh so it's that uh, yeah cringy then and then um what else are people usually saying oh i think they feel like they just don't get it. Mm. I think that's the typical thing. It's like, I don't understand social media. Yeah, like it's very mysterious. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not. It's you, you do understand social media because you like certain things. You save certain things. Mm -hmm. Okay, go into those saves. Why did you save them? What is it you like about those videos? Mm -hmm. what, and, and then create that for yourself. Create what you like to see. That's all you need to do. If you don't want to feel cringy or weird or you feel like you don't understand it, just create the things that you like. Create based off of what you are already interested, what you're already consuming. You just go and create those things mm -hmm. for yourself. And it doesn't have to be at the same level or the same production or whatever yet, but at least get, get your reps in. Mm -hmm. And as you get going, you begin to understand it on the way, like little by little. These things start to make sense, but it's not going to make sense. You're not going to get it in the first video yeah. in the third video in the fifth video. It is going to take 20, 30 videos before you can then look back and be like, OK, this worked. That didn't work. Uh, why did this work? Why did that not work? And you start piecing together like, oh, um, the the first three seconds of this video, I was just standing around. Mm. So people probably clicked off and that's why it didn't well, do well. But this video, the first three seconds, I grabbed their attention. Okay, I need to make sure the first three seconds of every video, I grab their attention to, to maintain them on the video. Uh, or you'll realize like, oh, um, what length works the best? Uh, or if I'm talking about something, what kind of subjects do people really like to hear about? Okay, every time I set, start the video with, this is how to blah, 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 blah those videos do well. Okay, people like to hear about how to from me or mm. uh, it might be something else totally different from you, but um, that's what you'll kind of figure out. So when you look at the TDC page, we post what we post because we know what kind of t topics we want to hear about mm -hmm. and we know how the conversation needs to start in order for people to stay. We know where the captions need to be, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we know that we need to have captions on the screen um we know what angles people really like the best when if it is a vi talking video or if it's a dance video we know the exact angle <laughs> uh that 
looks best. We know how close we need to be to the mayor, how far we need to be away from the mayor. Um, we know when certain moments are going to happen. We're better at that now. We understand within the class, okay, we kind of have like a formula of, okay, that first time the choreographer, I'm giving tips, I'm giving the juice right now, but <laughs> the first time the the teacher does the piece, we gotta get that, because that's gonna be like the best energy. Mm -hmm. It's the first time everybody's seeing it with music. We need to make sure we get that, right? That always kind of does well. So it's like, but you don't learn until you've done enough of them to then you can like see patterns and things start to stand out to you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think then, that consistency is the main key to relevancy mm -hmm. or not necessarily? I think consistency is where everybody needs to start. And then I think the key to remaining relevant is to continuously introduce new things mm. and evolve and to Oh, and then to touch on what is relevant, to touch on what's current, mm. whether you're dancing to something that's current and relevant and trending or whatever. And it doesn't mean every single song you do ever needs to be a trending song, mm. but just sometimes like it's good to like, you know, see your favorite choreographer approach a song that's out that you really like mm. that everybody's playing. Let's see what your perspective is on it. So whether it's what you're creating too, or if you are talking in the video, uh, you know, I think a lot of these clips will do well because we're talking about social media and everybody's trying to figure out every dance. I mean, everybody in general is trying to figure out social media, <laughs> yeah. but um, a lot of dancers, teachers, choreographers, are trying, studios even, are trying to figure out social media and how it works. And, you know, they're learning more and more every day how important it is. So, you know, that's why I think a lot of these clips will do well um, because we're touching on something that is on top of mind for a lot of people, mm. right? So when you're speaking in your videos, okay, let's t what, what is the culture talking about? What are people talking about in classes? What are dancers talking about in conversations? And can you bring your perspective, your opinion, or even just introduce the, uh, the topic to a wider audience? Mm. How do we feel about this? You know, I think Isaiah just did that recently. Mm. Should, should, classes be filmed oh yeah yeah right mm -hmm. that's something everybody wants to talk about yeah and even i feel like there's probably non-dancers in there like please film your videos we love your dance <laughs> videos whatever you know or yeah. sharing whatever their perspective is you know so how can you touch on i think that's always going to be the job of an artist you know we're supposed to reflect the times mm. we're supposed to share our our perspective opinion on whatever is going on or help people heal from whatever is going on mm -hmm. art is a res re supposed to reflect the times it's, re it's supposed to reflect culture mm -hmm. and where we are so yeah yeah that's how you can stay relevant yeah because i feel like when you lose sight of that too like the point is the is the art like everything that comes before it gets posted I think too if, when you're thinking ahead of time like how it's going to be reacted to or like all mm, that comes mm -hmm. afterwards i think that's when the feeling of it changes and, and then i think you can even see that mm. too when it's like you're just trying to put out art or like your opinion because like that's what's relevant mm. in your mm. life but mm. if it's like okay how's this video gonna do like you mm -hmm. know all that kind of stuff that's it's just that's what i think is part of the old school mindset as well yeah yeah and and also when it comes to something like uh say if you are posting on tiktok if it doesn't matter if it doesn't do well it doesn't matter you know mm. and if the topic is not interesting it doesn't matter because the way the algorithm works it's 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 interest based mm. so it's not like people based so it's not like every single video you post gets pushed out to every single follower you know it's it so you could post five times in a day mm. i might only see one of those videos because it's the one that's most um catered to my interests mm. 
than things that the kind of content that I like to consume. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter how much you're posting. So it's, I just say that because sometimes people, people feel like they might be posting too much or they feel like every single video has to be perfect and every single video has to hit and yeah. go viral. It, no, it doesn't. Every, mm -hmm. Like you're just gonna learn from each one what people are interested in hearing about, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and I'll definitely say that TikTok is more so where you can build kind of like notoriety community. And then I feel like that's the platform to where if you do want to work with brands, I think that's a good platform to push that. Mm -hmm. Not to say that Instagram, you can't do that, but I think you have a lot more chances of building a following and building it quick through TikTok. Yeah. Um, and then Instagram is more of like your portfolio. It's like your online portfolio. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's going to be more so catered to just like may maybe more so catered to like industry people mm -hmm. and you know the choreographers that you want to work with stuff like that because that's what's going to get sent out when you are being suggested or referred to jobs or if you are reaching out to somebody and saying I want to work with you they're going to obviously go through your page mm -hmm. and see what you're about how versatile are you how skilled are you all of those kinds of things before they determine if they're going to work with you. And, and that's for every job. That's what people need to understand. Every single job, every single job I've done recently, every job that my friends are telling me, like when they're getting referred dancers or when they're sending dancers to the artist to mm -hmm. see who you like, who you don't like, whatever, they're sending Instagram pages. You know, that is your portfolio. That is what represents you as a dancer like that's the new portfolio so that's how you need to think of it with your, your pay with your page it needs to be curated to look like that this is what i can do this is um the things that i have done before as far as jobs uh even if you haven't done jobs it's fine just to show the skill set that you have and versatility you have and then um y it, it still is good to have a video here and there of you just talking mm -hmm. and just the, them getting to know what your vibe is like. Who is this person that I'm gonna be in a studio with for eight hours a day? Am right. I going to enjoy them, enjoy working with them, that kind of thing. Mm. Mind you, everybody doesn't need to love you and be your best friend, you know? Just be your authentic self, and that's how you'll attract the jobs that are best for you and that you'll enjoy the most. Mm, yeah. What do you think is the most untapped avenue or platform that dancers are not? fully using right now mm, really all of them <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> really all of them but i would say more so yeah okay two things i think it's more so expanding the the types of content that uh, i think talking videos is like the untapped content mm -hmm. um and then i still wish I would see more dancers on YouTube, mm. uh, like long form stuff, whether it's like vlogs or Dan Life slash vlog um, or even podcasts. I think we need more quality podcasts that go in all kinds of different directions with dance. Um, I would even love to see somebody who I love those like cinematic vlogs. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love those. <laughs> I'm a sucker for them. <laughs> yeah. I would love those, even if yeah. somebody's just at the house. Mm -hmm. You know, I've just seen that done really, really well. Um, so yeah, I think things like that could be. I think that could be really cool to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I would say I would say YouTube. I, I wish I would see more of it on there. Or I even, all right, I'm, I'm going to just put this idea out there. But I gave, like, uh, Lauren, I gave Lauren and Jeremiah this idea of mixing, like, a class video, mm. like your typical class video, with a vlog. Yeah. Like, if both of them were paired, like, if I saw – like the process leading up to it, the creation process, even just the day mm. before you go and teach, you know, or what is that hour or two before you go teach at Millennium? Yeah. What is that like? What are you doing within that time? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. how are you practicing? Who are you with? 
you know, what is your go-to drink before you go to, to class? Whatever that is. How are you packing your bag? What's in your bag for yeah. class? You know, all of that kind of stuff. If, if I could see all of that and then it goes into you teaching and then I see like the groups and people going off at the end, that's fire. Mm -hmm. We need like a new age version of the class video, like more thought out, deeper. And then imagine if it was like a cinematic version of mm. that. Ugh, that would be disgusting. <laughs> that would be so fire. Anybody will watch that. Yeah. Plus then it's like we've, we've talked about this before of like when you have the longer form content, then that's your short form exactly. content already. Like yes. You just chop it up. <laughs> yeah. It's easy. It's done, you know? Yeah. And that's how, like, the best people are doing it, like, that are on social media. They have their long-form YouTube stuff, and then either they or their team or whatever cups up, cuts up clips to be posted on TikTok and Instagram. And now you're hitting all platforms, and you're building an audience on each one of them. And I've also heard that YouTube is... Like long term wise, that's the best place to be mm -hmm. because that content lives a lot longer than mm -hmm. like a TikTok video. Yeah, you know. True. Um, so that's what I think pe people should do for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm even trying to figure it out. And this is even a part of that, like mm -hmm. doing the podcast, is my like long form YouTube content to then be cut down for yeah. TikTok and IG. Mm. Yeah. Um, have you made any mistakes with social media or are there any lessons you'd like to impart on the people? <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I would have continued to push my YouTube. Mm. Like that's actually where my biggest following is. I almost have like 300,000 subscribers mm. on YouTube, but I stopped a long time ago because I was just doing class video, class video, class video, and it was working, but I just got bored with it and it mm. felt just super redundant and, um, tedious and yeah I just got really bored with it and I didn't really think to do think of what to do next quick enough mm. um, so I wish I would have evolved it and built off of YouTube more for sure because I think yes yeah, so many different opportunities would have would have come from that mm. um, so yeah I think I would have done exactly the idea that I just mentioned like, I wish I would have figured that out. Like, and I, I think whoever does approach it, uh, the first one might not go crazy, second one might not, the third one might not, mm -hmm. but it's gonna take a while and you're gonna figure out exactly how you need to format it and how to grab their attention in the beginning, maintain their intention in the middle, and then like really put a sample on it at the end. You're gonna figure out the perfect format. And once that does hit, like, imagine you get you're not only getting paid your rate for who shows up to class but a brand is paying you or something for your for you to teach mm. like a brand is paying for you to do what you already are doing and already love to do mm. that's incredible and then you can hire a team to just like film it for you edit it for you like all that kind of stuff that would be insanity that would be really crazy yeah are there any brands right now who are currently using dancers that mm. you are like looking forward to see more of whatever they're gonna put out next? Yeah, yeah, of course Nike, you know. Yeah. And I know they have uh, a shoe that just came out and I actually, I actually really want that shoe. There's like a, <laughs> a <laughs> shoe they created for breaking specifically, mm -hmm. but it looks like a great shoe to dance in. Um, Nike Jam, I think it's called the Nike Jam. Uh, yeah, I'm excited, and, and, and with that obviously comes commercials and ads that they're creating, so we're getting a chance to see dance in a way we've never seen it, like in a production level we've never been able to see before, mm -hmm. so I'm really excited for that. Um, I would say, yeah, right now Nike's killing it. Uh, I'm trying to think of anybody else. Obviously, and then the Olympics, I'm ex oh man, I'm excited to see what how they approach the stories of the b-boys and b-girls mm. uh i'm excited to see what those clips end up looking like Ugh. to see b-boys in the middle of paris battling in the olympics i can't wait i can't wait to see that i can't wait to see what that looks like um red bull's been killing it mm -hmm. uh red bull actually like that's some of their top content is their their battle videos from uh, Red Bull Dancer Style. 
Uh, I'm excited to see what they do next. Um, who else is killing it? I would say those, mm. those three for now. Olympics, Nike, Red Bull. Yeah. Have mm -hmm. you watched Vogue World? No. Is it with Vogue? Yeah. Like Vogue the magazine? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh-uh. They did, um, I think this is their second one they just did, and Paris did it. Mm. Um, like it's starting like I I feel like dance and like high fashion and like couture yeah. like because I mean they did the Nike show what was that last year yes, the one that Paris last did summer. yeah and then obviously like Savage Fenty yeah the Savage Fenty show too is fire yeah like mm. I feel like within fashion is where it's starting to go yeah like and, and, and think about that like think about how amazing that is the the dancing is the show you know, mm -hmm. it's not like they're coming for an artist or anything like that. It's like the dancing is the, s the dancers are the stars mm -hmm. in these shows. And on top of that, if you're a choreographer, it's f it's like what Paris would be doing at HHI or something like that. Like what she's done with her own work. And it's it's about her and her work. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you're going to see. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's that's crazy that we're at that level now to where you can get paid to like actually dance and, and the reason i the reason i say like actually dance is because you don't always get a chance in the industry to dance dance yeah you know <laughs> um if you're blessed and lucky and you get with like a chris brown victoria monet uh normani some of these artists that actually dance that is like actually rare mm -hmm. you know um, so that's that's when you get to actually use your training. That's not always the case, but when you're doing something like a Savage Fenty show, you're dancing. A Nike show, you are dancing. Like yeah. you're using everything <laughs> and more that you have been trained to do. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that you have learned is getting used in these shows. You know, mm -hmm. so that's just the ultimate. That's that hasn't been a thing, at least not for like hip hop styles or even commercial styles. Mm -hmm. It hasn't really been a thing. Ballet, they have the, their shows where it's all about them. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's new for us. And even at this scale, as big as these, these shows are, it's different. Mm. It's very different, yeah. Yeah, because even in the one that just happened, it's like there, it's not just dancers, like there's like models too, like mm -hmm. the top models. And yeah. then it's like the dancers are like right next to them. Like yes. it's like, it's such a cool, like it's not just one or the other anymore. Like it's starting to mesh in a way where I feel like I hadn't seen it like that. Yeah. Maybe Savage Fenty, you know, was doing stuff like that. But yes, this was like for sure. Vogue world, like in Paris, like it was like amazing. It was well done. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Yeah. More of that is coming. More of that is coming. Uh, people have come to realize the the real power of dance mm -hmm. in, in, in the social media age. I think we kind of are running it low key <laughs> right now, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, we just need to know that we're running it and take advantage of it and build off of the opportunity in the space that we're in right now. Yeah. Instead of just letting it just like passively happen, mm -hmm. you know, we need to be aware of like the opportunity and the uniqueness of this era that we live in. Yeah. Are there any brands not using dancers right now that you would like love to see them use dancers? Uh, yeah, this is just my own personal nature loving <laughs> self. Don't say REI or something. Yeah. <laughs> Patagonia. <laughs> I would love to see a Patagonia commercial with dancers. I would love to see uh, um, uh, random, but airbnb would be dope oh yeah yes i always thought it'd be dope to do like a like a creative retreat or like a um what do they call it artist artist in residence mm. which works perfectly air airbnb yeah like an artist in residence experience like i would love to see a choreographer go to some crazy place and create there mm. some crazy airbnb yeah in the middle of nowhere and create there that would be really fire i would love to see that just to promote yeah. using airbnb in a different kind of way mm. um so yeah airbnb patagonia and then who else would i like to see 
use dance that's not already using it. Um, I don't know. I got nothing right now. Yeah, I got nothing right now. I'd love to see those though. Yeah. Those two. Yeah. Um, this is my last question. Oh, beautiful. Unless we have more to talk about, which oh, we, we, go, we can always talk great. more, but I have one great. more. <laughs> what, uh, before we get to your last one, what do you mm-hmm. think has stood out to you the most? What has been most helpful for you so far mm. with what we've discussed? Mm. I think definitely the the first thing that comes to mind is like all all the content. If if it's like scary to think of like oh what what would I create? What would I put out? It's like it's just your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. It's just your life, and I think reframing the okay like at at this hour I'm gonna like just film content. It's like no, it can be like throughout the day. Like if you set up your infrastructure to like you have a tripod you have a phone with storage you know it's like it's not Mm -hmm. it's not as complicated as it sounds and we are in a time where i think a lot of the more like casual production does really well too yes so it just makes me like i'm just like excited you know like (laughs) it's it's really not as hard i think as we chalk it up to be like we would love to make excuses but it's it's pretty easy like it really is it can be and then and then with time and consistency and you build a body of work then you can like amp it up to do different things um but it's like after this like i could like film something and be like well i just i just filmed a podcast with antoine and like you know like yeah it's literally i don't have to wait till tomorrow literally it's just like the day and age that we're in and i think it's really exciting because i think you have to change your framework around it like if your mindset's kind of like not great like yeah change that first before yes. you start like putting out videos yes absolutely you know? so yeah i think it's it's so much more accessible than we think and yeah i think you you'd even said this to me before of like we we are the culture like we are just influential i'm not going to choose to like pursue a career as an influencer because it's not as far away as i think it is mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's just being in what we are already doing like that's just very influential already exactly exactly there's mm. people with absolutely no talent <laughs> 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 that are making tens of thousands of dollars yeah posted on social media uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a clip right there i'm just saying you know if they can do it why not you mm-hmm. with the, all of this training and how much you've hustled and grinded to do what you do why why would why can't you do the same mm-hmm. yeah it makes me want to like talk more actually mm-hmm. like I, it's like i think for dancers it's always like how we uh present ourselves can be sometimes very different than how we actually are because mm. maybe we don't talk so much mm-hmm. But like we're funny, like right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. We're funny. I think we're really smart. I think we're really bright. Like it makes me want to like talk more and yeah. share opinions. I think sometimes it's like, oh, it's just an opinion, so like, why would I share it? But I think that's that's also what makes the world go around is like being exactly. people's <laughs> opinions, you know? Yes. And what we decide and what we like and why we don't like it. It's yes. like it. I just want to talk. Yeah. You make me <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and <laughs> you know, artists, we see the world in a very different way mm-hmm. than everybody else. Yeah. Like, we can look at something and get so much from it and feel so much from it, and it can make us, it can inspire so many ideas, you know, from the simplest experience or the simplest sight that we see. Um, and I think, not even I think, that, that is fascinating. I th- it's fascinating to ne- any other artist to hear you know what your take from something is or how what's inspiring you but also for just anyone in the world that doesn't have that kind of mind Mm. that doesn't see the world in that kind of way it just makes them appreciate their life and their surroundings a little bit more you know they can walk outside and just look at something completely different Mm -hmm. you know i think that's a amazing superpower that us as artists have we think very different than the average person Mm -hmm. so uh, yeah share that share that share your weird thoughts i think be more weird too i think people need to be more a little more weird (laughs) like embrace embrace your weirdness i love weirdos yeah 
Yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think like all that being said too is like I've even gotten a little taste of it and I'm not even it's coming. I'm like put, gonna be posting more soon as yes, we've sp- spoken about. <laughs> um but it's like just getting those messages of like I watch you on the troop live streams mm-hmm. and like you inspire me to keep going when I'm tired or like if I've been in a, a YouTube video and like I see in the comments like that girl and like they've like go into a whole breakdown of like what they loved about amazing you know it's like that that's what makes it worth it mm-hmm. and like that it's not it's not putting these things out or sharing myself online for myself it's like to have if I could inspire someone to like pursue dance yeah like that night when I went to like Justin Timberlake's concert and literally just watched the dancers the entire time. If yeah. I could do that for someone else, yeah, that that would that's the way. And right also there. imagine imagine if you would have right after that concert pulled out your phone and just recorded like I'm a, it, like in the moment as you f- are feeling it, mm-hmm. you know, and sharing your insight and saying I just watched this and it made me feel like this and this dancer. Imagine shouting out that dancer, yeah, and being like you made me want to go get in the studio and work harder. Mm-hmm. That means so much to anyone watching in it, the, because they can relate because they probably felt like that at some point. Mm-hmm. But also that dancer, when they see that, like they worked so hard, they finally got on that tour. And then, then to hear another dancer who saw it, they felt something from it and they're inspired by it. Like that's, what, that's why we do this, Yeah, you know? And they need to know that, they need to hear that. You know, they put in so many hours and so much work to get up on that stage and do what they're doing. So, mm-hmm. you know, don't keep it to yourself. Not you, not anybody, not anybody who loves dance. Mm-hmm. Like, we want to hear it. We want to know because we don't always know, you know. We're, we're artists. We're always kind of, you know, we tend to question ourselves and, you know, are people going to like this? Am I doing the right thing? Blah, 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 blah. So to hear people's feedback, it, it means the world, especially when you care so much about what you do. And Mm -hmm. that's what I kind of have spoken to you about this is it's important for you to post also and people will enjoy hearing you speak just because of your passion, like how much you love what you do. Mm -hmm. People need to feel that. I need to feel that. That's why I like to listen to a lot of different podcasts and find things that inspire me. Mm -hmm. I want to hear from people who are passionate in life, who are living, who are going after it, who are getting after it because I want to feel that every day. I want that motivation or that also helps me get through tough days Mm -hmm. where I'm just not feeling it. And uh, you know, for whatever reason that day, I, I can't motivate myself, Mm -hmm. you know, where I typically can, I typically could get into it and tap in and go. There's some days, I don't know, for whatever reason, I'm just not feeling it today. Mm -hmm. And listening to, passionate people listening to inspiring people listen to motivational people it gets me there it gets the juices flowing it reminds me like okay this is what we're going for let's get it let's let's push yeah you know yeah and that's the mindset shift of like this is not to like glorify you and like your curated version of yourself like i think you can still serve a lot of people just by having an online presence yes it's about service yes at the end of the day it is (laughs) And, and and serve and inspire one person focus on that Mm -hmm. focus on one we're so obsessed with like millions Mm -hmm. thousands of people and oh this video didn't go whatever i don't know if if 100 people saw your video that's amazing Mm -hmm. honestly if five people saw it if one person saw it and they felt something from it and they were inspired by it if they liked it if they commented that's amazing since when when is one not enough like i'm super big (laughs) on that like one person, I always told myself that when I first started teaching and I, that, that is one, one of the things that I can credit with the success of my teaching career is before every class, I told myself if only one person shows up, I'm going to give them the best class that mm-hmm. they've had all day. Like it, it's not about it being packed out and sold out. And like people are, people are so stifled by I don't want to do it unless it's going to be sold out, unless mm. it's going to be the biggest class and the best choreography. It, it's like, what? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, like start small. It's perfectly fine and appropriate. And you should just start small, start with one, start with an expectation of like, I just want one person. And even if it is, even if it is a sold out room, I'm still going in like, 
uh, if if I just connect with one person, if I shift somebody's thinking, just one person today, like that's a successful class. Mm-hmm. That's 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 amazing. That is enough. Yeah. Like to inspire a person's life and get them to make different choices and different decisions. Like to have that impact on a person's life, their one life that they get to live. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. You. Mm-hmm help someone in their life yeah. <laughs> like yeah. what that's insane because even if it is just the one inherently that's gonna touch like a mm-hmm. hundred other people exactly you know exactly even if you like you will never fully understand the impact of just what the one yes. will do yes exactly yeah. exactly exactly yeah yeah so my last question is last question let's do it do you have any social media or dance predictions for 2024 Hmm. I, I don't know about 2024, but just like beyond, mm-hmm. we'll begin to see like our first millionaire dancers. Mm. I think there might be a couple mm-hmm. that have done it, but we'll see. We'll definitely see like our millionaire are like six figure living really well mm. dancers. And it will be because of social media. It will be because of the opportunities presented by social media. So that's what that's what I see coming. Yeah. And mm. retirement. <laughs> and reti- exactly. Retirement. <laughs> retirement is amazing. Please, everyone think about <laughs> your retirement. You will not do this forever. You need an exit plan. And that's why with the management company that I'm going to start is that's the impact I want to have. I want you to have a successful career. But let's also think about after this career. Let's think about what do you, how can we build yourself, build your brand up, build your business up to where you can stop and say, I want to go in a different direction. And you'll have either the finances, the community, the influence to be able to do that and do it seamlessly, Mm. you know, versus, you know, you get to a certain age and you want to stop, but you can't because it's the only way your bills are getting paid and you haven't built anything for yourself. You know, so yeah, I think that's really that's really important. I'm I'm retired right now. <laughs> I'm retired. I haven't really talked about it much, but um, yeah, I'm phasing myself out. I, like I have a couple more things I'm gonna be doing, but um, I've already like I've stopped teaching as much as I was teaching before, and you know, I'm focused on other things. I want to focus on the business side of things and. There's a couple other things that I want to launch that I think are important. And uh, I, I just think I'm, I'm better at serving in a different way and mm-hmm. educating and mentoring in a different way, a different capacity than just being in the studio and teaching dance classes. Uh, and yeah, it's beautiful. And the thing is, I set myself up to where I, I can do that. Mm-hmm. I've built a brand, I've built a business for myself to where people trust it and you know they're coming for more than just me you know Mm. they're coming for the teacher they're coming for the 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 system of training the the philosophy behind training the quality of training and it's not just for Antoine and it was never just supposed to be about me um so yeah it's a beautiful thing it's an amazing thing (laughs) <laughs> yeah I mean it's changed my life so hey, thank you I love it I appreciate it and I love you and I appreciate yeah. you and I'm happy to you know I'm happy for the relationship that we have and I'm happy to see you just thrive and grow and and I ah, I can't wait to see what the next five years beyond and beyond looks like for you yeah yeah Thanks for answering all my questions. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Boom. That's uh, episode whatever this is. Yeah. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you got something for this. From this, I'm sure you did. Great questions. Thank you so much. Yeah. Where can they follow you? Oh, I'm Hannah.Pinky. <laughs> On Instagram <laughs> On and Instagram. TikTok. It's the same. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Follow the Instagram and you'll find the TikTok. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, this has been great make sure you like subscribe comment if you are watching on either youtube or spotify whatever you want it to be answered in the next podcast put it down below or if you have a guest suggestion put it in the comment i read every single comment so i will see it but yeah i think that's it that's a wrap yeah peace y'all Woo.